Well, hey, beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of Faith and Friends. I'm your host, your friend, and your sister in Christ, Georgia Brown, and truly, I am beyond grateful that you're here for today's conversation. We are continuing in our prayer series today as we talk about how prayer should be a priority of ours. And you know, I seriously cannot think of a better friend to talk about this with than the one and only Ashley Hetherington. You may know her as the Honey Scoop Girl over on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest. And you know what, y'all, I am beyond grateful to call this girl one of my real life besties. We get to do life together and I am beyond grateful. And you know, I've heard it said that your public life is only as powerful as your private life. And as I see Ashley live her life on and off the screen, she is the same, if not way better in person. I'm just so grateful for who she is and the way she is so disciplined in the Lord. It is such a beauty to behold, and I pray that today's conversation inspires you and encourages you. And you know what? Even today, we were voice memoing back and forth, even continuing in this conversation that we had on the podcast, just within our texting life together and talking about how, you know what? The things that have our yes, that also means that something has our no. And how we really have to guard and protect our time. It's such a special thing. And once once you get this, man, there's so much liberty and freedom. And it's such a beautiful thing. And I truly pray that this conversation blesses you and meets you right where you're at, friend. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Ashley, my honey girl. Ashley's name in my phone, y'all, is Ashley Honey. Because she's just sweeter than honey. The honey scoop girl. You know her. You love her. Thanks for joining us on Faith and Friends, sis. Girl, I am so excited to be here. You are a joy. You are a dear friend. And I just love you. And I know the people listening love you too. So I'm just so excited to chat. Me too, girl. I'm just so thankful. And honestly, friends, this is so sweet for me because I haven't seen Ashley girl in a hot second. And so this is like good girl chat time. So honestly, we're just going to have the sweetest conversation and we're just going to let the spirit lead because as we're in this prayer series, Ashley came to the forefront of my heart, of course, because this girl is so disciplined and prayer is a priority. And when I thought about that, I'm like, who prioritizes the father? Mm. Ashley. Ashley Hetherington literally is so in love with Jesus. It is infectious. And every time I'm with you, Ash, I want to go deeper with him. And I'm convicted. Like literally last time I was with you, you were calling out things in my life. And that's why you have to stay close to people that stay close to him. And I'm like, yes, ma'am. And you're like speaking words over me. And you're like, I just need to call you and like, tell you what I feel like I saw in the spirit. And it's like, whoa, sis, like, man. And how you get there is spending time with him, making Mm -hmm. him your priority Mm -hmm. because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. It's up to us on how we're going to use him, how we're going to steward him. And I know it always wasn't that way. Like, take me back to Ashley in college. Like, let's start at the beginning. Let's testify. Can we testify, Ashley? (laughs) (laughs) So dead. (laughs) Wow. Honestly, college me, I don't recognize her. She's dead. That's the thing. She's, yeah, she is dead. You're so right. Yeah, she's You're a new creation. But it's wild because I was like a quote unquote Christian in college. Yeah. So I was just a lukewarm Christian. Mm. Yeah. What changed for you? Was there a moment or was it many moments that just finally led to a breaking point for you where you were like, I don't Mm. want to be lukewarm anymore. Like this can't be what Christianity is. If I just put a label over just me being the same, I'm not forever changed from the inside out. Like, I don't want to slap a label on it. I want to be renewed. Mm. Amen. Honestly, the, the time that I felt like I needed to be two feet in, not one foot in, one foot out is when I was in desperation. And sometimes God will bring us to a place of desperation Come on, because that's when we need to look up and realize that we need him. So I was at rock bottom. My lukewarmness got me through, um, you know, I think like three years in my walk with Jesus, maybe three to four years in my walk with Jesus. I was a lukewarm girl. So I was still 
I was just living a lukewarm life. I would go out on the weekends. I would go to church on Sunday. And I was thinking like, yeah, that's, they can be the two in the same. I was like, you know, dating this guy and our relationship wasn't glorifying God. And then I was, you know, listening to sermons about healthy relationships and God glorifying relationships. But still, I was in this relationship. So, but that worked for me. Like lukewarmness was my thing because it was working. I it was comfy. Yeah. I could do both. No one was telling me to stop doing it. So it got to a point where I got in that, I got in a breakup with that guy and my parents got a divorce that I was so upset with God and the real, the, my real faith showed what it really was. It was, it was not strong faith because I ran away from the Lord. I was like, I cannot believe you would allow these two things to happen at the same time, Lord. Like what the heck? So I run away. I go more into the party scene. I go more into finding my worth and men and like just not smart things. As, but, you know, I was living my college life. I'm like, you know what? I can just t- put God on the back burner for now and I can just go do my own thing. I did that for a year until I hit literal rock bottom and I found that there was no life there. Like mm. I was searching for healing in all the wrong places. I finally remember being in my childhood bedroom after COVID everyone will know it was right before COVID, but it was during winter break of my junior year of college. I'm sitting in my childhood bedroom. It's winter break. So everyone's home. And I'm, I don't know what happened, but I just realized that I just felt so such lack of purpose. And I was looking at myself and I was like, who have we become Ash? This is not you. This is not you. And I felt the Lord. I felt the Lord in my room be like, okay, you ready, sis? Like you ready to, you ready to heal with me? Mm. Because you've been going your own route, but I'm ready to take you with me. And I love you. I'm here. Like you want to keep, you can either keep going down this route. You can follow me. And I was like, you know what, Lord, I'm going to follow you. So in my bedroom, I was like, okay. So I go back to school. I cut it all out. I just, I literally cut it all out. And I went on just a journey of healing. Yeah. And Uh, but it was in that journey of healing that I realized like, I need the Lord. Like Mm -hmm. I need to hear his voice. I can't just survive without a relationship with God. Like I can't do it. So the lukewarm was getting me so far because I didn't really need God. Sometimes we're in lukewarm because we don't really need him. But Mm -hmm. when we get to a point where we need him, it's like, I can't be, I can't be cold anymore. I need to be all in. Yeah. Girl, that's good. Okay, okay, okay. This is making me think of, here we go. Okay. Mm. Where is this? You know where they talk about being lukewarm in scripture? Where he talks about the father would rather spit you out of his mouth. Mm. He would rather you be hot or cold. It's time to choose. Like truly, yeah. oh my gosh, Ashley, in, in, in War Room, they have a scene about this where the sweet little old lady, Miss Claire, asked Pris- Priscilla, the actress <laughs> that, that's playing. Yeah. She says, um, how do you like your coffee? And, you know, she's like hot. But she first asked her, how's your, her- how's your prayer life? And she said, oh, I don't know. So she's in there making coffee while they're talking about their prayer life. And she hands her a cup of coffee and she takes a sip and she goes, oh, Miss Clara this is, this is cold. And she said, just like your prayer life. (laughs) No one likes lukewarm coffee. And I just thought that was so funny and so sweet. And so truly when you got real with God, he became real to you. Mm -hmm. And you realized I cannot do this without him. What sustained you yesterday or five years ago, or when you were at summer camp last summer, like that spiritual Mm -hmm. high, like that can't sustain you for today because you know what? He's our daily bread. And that is something I love about you, Ashley, because you put your feet to your faith in such a way that says, I'm going to do this. I can do hard things because I know who my God is and he is a provider. He is the great I am. He is Jehovah. Like you know him and you walk with such confidence because you stay in his word and you stay in his presence. And I get so convicted about that, Ashley, because you're up at 5 a.m. and I'm over here like snooze. Oh, just five more minutes. 
And you, you push us all to be better. You hold up a mirror to us in Christ and you say, keep going. Like, can you crucify your flesh just a little more today? Can you say no to that donut? Because God won't entrust you with more of his presence if you can't say no to a donut or no to a soda. Like, like, hello. Like he who can be entrusted with little can be entrusted with much. And Ashley, you just live that out. And so I know it always wasn't at this capacity that you're at, right? Because you had to grow to this capacity. So what were those first little things that you started after COVID or during COVID um, that you just started walking in and made it a priority? Mm. Reading scripture. Come on. Every day. Not just on Sundays and not through a podcast that I was listening to, like a sermon, I would listen to sermons and I would replace that with scripture. Mm. No scripture. You, when you read this, there's something that happens between you and the Lord. When you're sitting here reading this, Yeah. if you want to listen to it, there's a lot of audible learners. And I want to respect that. If you want to listen to it, but that time alone will transform you. Mm. The, I think the only reason that I can look back and go, wow, who is that girl from college? It's the word. Yep. It's reading this every day. It is the word. It's wild. And the coolest thing ever is that goes with prayer because when you read this, a lot of people are like, well, I don't know God's voice. How do I hear God's voice? But they're not in scripture. Mm. You got to be, read, you want to know God's voice. You got to read his word because what's going to happen is you're reading his word every single day. This is the coolest thing ever. I hope that this can be unlocked for someone on the other side, because I've just learned this in the last couple of years. You're reading this word every day. You're waking up, you're reading Jeremiah. Why, why do I have to read Jeremiah? There's nothing in here. Okay. But you still read it. You read Matthew. You just stick to your reading plan. You read. And then when you're in that place where you're having a tough day and you're, praying to the Lord. And you're saying, God, would you speak to me in this area? And he brings up a scripture right then and there that you read two years ago, but he brings it up. That's fruit. That That's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. I did need to read that that one time because two years later, I now am reaping that diligence to get in my Bible when I didn't want to, because now I needed to hear that word from the Lord. And he is, his spirit can speak in all ways. I think his spirit can give us scriptures that we haven't even, you know, known about, but yeah. it's beautiful when you're in this, he speaks to you more and you get, you're able to discern his will and his voice. Mm, you're right. Like we have to be in the word. He is the word. The word made flesh, Jesus. And then he went back up so he could send us his spirit. So if you are in Christ, walking with him, you have his spirit. He is with you at all times. God with us, Emmanuel. Like the word is so important. And I know for so many of us, we can look at this and think, ah, like, where do I start? It's hard for me to understand. And you know what? I think the enemy just really tries to use those as excuses to overwhelm us, to keep us from this, because this is where fullness of freedom is found. And then you've got that spirit of slumber that'll try to come upon you. You open up the Bible for five seconds and you start to fall asleep when you could be binging Netflix till 2 a.m. and you don't even bat an eye, you know? And so like we need to put the first things first because mm -hmm. oh, my life verse, Matthew 6, 33 says, seek first the kingdom. And in the model prayer that Jesus gave us, it says on earth as it is in heaven, mm. we have to seek first his kingdom so we can know what we are called to bring here. And so by you, Ashley, setting him as a priority, looking to him first before you look to the world, go to social media, look in the mirror and try to have the whole world try to tell you who you are. You go to the word and you say, Father, Make me more like you today. And it mm. may be one verse. It may be just pouring your heart out in your journal that day of just like letting it all out. But to that friend that may feel overwhelmed or maybe overlooked or a little in need of guidance, mm -hmm. I've been there. And what I love about the body of Christ is we all have our own little walks with him because it's a personal relationship. And so for me in this season, I'm going through scripture chronologically, but for you, Ashley, what have you been doing? What has been kind of a soft, sweet spot that you, you go back to, if you're like, ah, I don't know where to go to today. Just give us a little bit of wisdom on that. Mm. 
Well, one thing that I'll do, speaking of wisdom, is I'll read the proverb of the day. Mm. So, so if I don't know what to read, I'll go, okay, what does proverbs say for this day of the month? And so if it's, there's 31 proverbs. And so there's 31 days of the month that you have a proverb for. You just flip to the day and you can, you can just read it. But sometimes I will literally just open it. Sometimes I'll ask the Lord, I'll say, God, what do you want me to read right now? But I think without a plan, you plan to fail. And if I'm going to the gym and I'm like, all right, That's good. all right, what should I do today? Versus if on Sunday night, I'm like, all right, uh, Pilates Tuesday, Wednesday running plus lifting Thursday, this day, like Thursday, this thing at six o'clock or whatever, you just make it when you make a schedule, you're going to commit to it. So mm. I think if any beginners out there reading the Bible, pick a book, pick a book. It could be a gospel. I really recommend a gospel. I feel like the gospel of John is a perfect start. Um, a gospel, the book of James, the book of Romans. I'm sure Georgia, you could give some suggestions too, but you literally just wake up and you commit to 15 minutes a day reading it. That's mm -hmm. it. You get a cute highlighter. If you want to have fun doodling, you just, you do whatever you want like that. You just make sure you commit to 15 minutes a day. Yeah. Well, what's What would you suggest? Girl. Man, I love that. I love it. It's so sweet. You're right. The gospels are so beautiful. Doing a proverb a day. What started for me in college in those early days of really just like going to the father is I would just open the Bible app and I'd be like, what's the verse of the day? Okay. Is this old Testament? Is this new Testament? Who's Obadiah? Like Jeremiah, minor prophet, major prophet. Who? And then I would just take my highlighter, highlight it. And that's, that was my 15 minutes a day. But you know, what's so sweet. Those 15 minutes have now turned into an hour. Like I don't want to leave his presence in the morning. I know I have to, it's time to like get going and do what the Lord's called me to. But the more you spend time with him, the more you want him. He wants you to want him. And that's the beautiful thing about free will is the more you're with him, the more you crave the things of heaven you do. And you're like, I just want more. And guess what? You can have more. You get as much freedom, as much deliverance, as much healing, as much of the word as you want. It's up to you with those 24 hours a day, with your diligence, with your planning. I love that you mentioned that, Ashley, because you do that so well. Because you're right, man makes his plans, but the Lord establishes his steps. So even just having an outline of like, hey, these are the top three things I'd like to get done today. Hey, this is a deadline coming up. Maybe I should prepare and plant the seeds for this because truly the Lord is watching. And I know sometimes it's easy for us to think no one else sees me and I can just do whatever I want in the secret. Mm -mm. What is done in secret will be revealed. And so truly you have to go down if you want to go up. And I honestly love the hidden seasons even more than the ones where you're just like, yeah, because there's an intimacy and a growth and a protection that is just so sweet and cultivated in that season. Mm -hmm. um, man, I don't know. That's just coming to mind. So I would just love, Ashley, if you would talk about what it looks like for you to come to the Lord and be like, hey, like what does this week look like? Or maybe not even the week, but what does today look like? What is, what do you want me to prepare for tomorrow? Because I even know in the Jewish culture, they prepare for the next day, the night before, mm. and they get all their things ready. Like, and I even tried to do that a few times and I should do it more. I'm convicted, but like setting out your clothes the night before or being, uh, having overnight oats, like ready for you the next day, just different <laughs> things of preparing well to be able to then walk out what God's called you to. Mm, girl, it's so funny. I actually break, I break it down like seasons. Mm. So I, I do it every quarter. Well, every, um, it's every four months and I'll do like, what are the next four months next? Sometimes it'll be three months right now. I was in like, um, anyway, long story short, I will break it. I will at the beginning of a new season. So with summer coming up, like with June, I'll, I'll do it again in June. But for this past spring, I was like, all right, Lord, what are the focuses that you want me to have this season? And I would just 
pray and discern over, you know, a couple of days, I would journal, I would be in his presence, I would ask, I would read scripture. And I felt like there were a couple of things standing out, but usually it's like three or four that I feel like really strongly he wants me to focus on this season. So then I write them down. Then I, this is like so planner me, but like it actually might help you. So ask the Lord, what do you want me to focus on this season? Because what you prioritized last season might not come over to this season because Good. there are things that change every season and life changes. And God's like, Hey, we're going to focus on this, this season that this is the new season. I'm taking you out of there. That was great. That was cool. But we're here now. So mm -hmm discerning what's this season. And then every single Sunday night, I will go to that thing. I write them all down. Like the four, I have four things. I'm not writing 10 things. I write four things and I write like little notes underneath to make those things, you know, come to fruition. Like what needs to happen for each of those things to happen? And I'll look at it and I'll go, what do I need to do this week to achieve these things? Mm. So if one of them is like, you know, get good sleep. Okay. I need to make sure that I'm setting an alarm every single night this week, Monday through Friday at, you know, 8 PM saying, Hey, time to get ready for bed. Like being that, but looking at that first and going like big scale and then Sunday night going, what do I need to do to hit these this week? And then you put them in your calendar and then your priorities are in your calendar first. And then, and then you don't get distracted. Basically that is what I do. And it is so wild what you can achieve when you're super focused. You're right. <clears throat> you, <laughs> you're right about that. Like, seriously, what comes to mind, Ash, is people will say, Jesus, others, you, and you put yourself last and you start to pour out from an empty cup when the Lord is not even calling you to pour out. He's just calling you to live in the overflow and just truly to walk with him. And so you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Like on an airplane, they say, put your mask on before you assist anybody else. And so for the fact for you to even say, I need to get good sleep, like I'm convicted like this week. I haven't gotten the rest that I know I need to give the Lord my best. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just so sweet when you step up to the plate and say, Lord, I want you to call me higher. So what do I need to do? What do I need to take out of my life? What this week made me more like you? What took me away from you this week? What needs to have my yes and what needs to have my no? And I even found myself, Ashley, the other day in my prayer closet this week, realizing I haven't been praying specific enough. Mm. If just praying like very broad prayers of like, okay, Lord, like, you know, here's, here's some ideas for faith and friends, you know, book coming up, launching and all this stuff. And then I felt like the Lord was like, I delight in the details. Mm. Do you see even in the book of numbers, I tell you numbers, I tell you details, I tell you insights into my heart, not just to tell a good story and to paint you a picture, but to reveal to you who I am and my character mm. and that I care about everything, right? And so I found myself just sitting before him and being like, okay, Lord, I want you to guide this but this is where I'm at. These are some details. These are some things that are on my heart. Like I submit them to you. And that really is what prayer is, is it's lifting your heart and your hands up to heaven and saying, thy will be done. And when you say, amen, you release it back up to him and you just keep on walking. And so what do you do, Ashley, if there is something that you don't get done? Like, I feel like sometimes I can beat myself up with it. I'm like, oh, I didn't get this done. But we have to, again, know that our checklist is not the law. Mm. And I think sometimes we can become religious. We can become rigid. We can become ritualistic to where the relationship gets pushed to the side even. And we start to work out of a works-based theology. And that just ain't the truth. Like, it is by grace through faith that we are saved. But the work that we do is because we have been saved and we are like, oh, I want to do nothing but work for you, work unto the Lord, committing everything to him. So what do you do when you're like, oh, it's the end of the week. I didn't get that done. Mm. Oh my goodness. Well, what helps 
with on a practical scale is like every, you know, every morning writing three things that like, if it's six o'clock and the world's ending, you're getting those things done. So maybe at the beginning of the day, you just get those things done, right? Yeah. Get three things done. Three. It's not a million things, but usually if those three things are prioritized, well, like the other things on the to-do list, it's just like, it doesn't get done. It's a release. You go, okay, Lord, when do you want me to get that done? Really asking him, God, when do you want me to get that done? Or does this even need to get done anymore? Can this just be booted? Mm -hmm. Can this just go? Does this even have to happen? So it's really, I think that relationship that you're talking about, Georgia, just asking the Lord and having him help you. Mm. Some of the things that we think we need to do, God was like, I never told you to do that. (laughs) Okay, that's good. And we put this pressure on us, like he's called us to these places and spaces, or we even get FOMO and we go to these things that may be a good thing, but they're not the God thing for us on that day or even in that season. Mm -hmm. And just because we don't want to say no or even take it to him, because that's one thing that I love reading about David in the scriptures is he's always going back to the Lord saying, Hey, what do you think about this? Should we go conquer this land? Should we go do this? And sometimes when he doesn't do it, you know, that's right when the bad things start to happen when he doesn't consult the Lord like just talk to him because that's what prayer is making that a priority of saying hey is this something you want for me today is this a coffee date that I really should be going to is this an event that would bring you the most glory Lord with my time today and so man I think that is so sweet you're so right about that sis And I love that you mentioned that because I feel like it's freeing someone from the need to say yes to everything. Like there, the other weekend, it was my Sabbath and I really felt from the Lord to just get still with him all day, just be alone with him and just recharge, be with God, go on a walk, like have a chill day. But then I got invited to this really fun thing. Mm -hmm. And I, on the the pressure side of me is like, I need to go to the fun thing. And I need to say yes, because I feel bad saying no. And like, what do people think that like, I don't love them if I don't go. But the other side, when I talked to the Lord, I felt like he was like, no, no, no. this is a day for you. And I, Mm. this is a day for us. Can we just do that? And so I chose the other way. I was like, I'm just going to be with the Lord. And I'm so glad I did. So I felt so I, by the end of the day, I was just so happy because I got time with him. And so listening to him, like, The people who love you are going to be okay. If you say no, they're going to be okay there. We, that's when you know, you're in a safe relationship. If you can say no and they still love you and they're not upset with you. I feel like that's safe. People who you are so afraid of like walking on eggshells, so afraid to make them upset. I would just discern what kind of friendship that is. Mm. That's good. That's really good, Ashley. Because sometimes we think if we don't go to something like, oh, I'm missing out, or we even think like we get in this savior kind of complex too. It's like, you ain't nobody's savior. It's okay. Sit down. So like good. rest, like rest. And you'll never regret listening to the father's voice. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to understand to obey. Like, oh, there was something I really wanted to go to the other night, Ashley. We could talk about it later too. Some girl talking, <laughs> God talk. But I literally was on the phone and I was like, okay, yes, yeah, sure. I'll go to this with you. And then hung up the phone and the Holy Spirit said, you're not going. And I was like, but, 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 but I really want to go. And I argued with God. Have you ever wrestled with God? Like, mm. wasn't it Jacob that just came away even with a limp? He's like, I'm not leaving you till you bless me, but I'm wrestling with you right now. It, man. And it, it's so frustrating in those moments, but I knew it was Holy spirit. I knew it was God. And if I would have gone, I would have been willfully disobeying. And I wouldn't have been in God's perfect will for my life in that moment and on that day and in that evening. And his hand would have been off of me. And I didn't, I don't want that. I want to stay in his presence. I want to stay in his perfect path for me. Mm. And sometimes that looks like saying no to things that are unexpected 
or it looks like saying yes to things that are unexpected, which is so beautiful. So that's why when you make him a priority, get to know his word, stay in his presence, he is worth the sacrifice because my gosh, God sacrificed him for you. So are you willing to sacrifice a little bit of your time, a little bit of your treasures that he blessed you with? Like, golly, he's just so good, isn't he? Yeah. Wow. Amen. Ash, where do you feel like the Lord's taking you from here in your obedience mm -hmm. as you walk with him, as you go deeper? What does it feel like? Is it just so freeing? Like share with our friends, like what it's like, testify. Oh my goodness. I just, I think the Lord has just shown me, I guess has humbled me. Like when I listen to his voice, things go well. Mm. When I don't listen to his voice, things go sour. <laughs> and so it's humbling. The ideas that I think are best for me are not always best for me. When I walk with him and I'm constantly in communion with him, it tells us to be constant in prayer. When I'm in that, like there's just blessing and fruit and there's, there's not always ease because sometimes like, you know, he says that he will be strong for us or we are weak, but that mm -hmm. doesn't change that we're weak. That doesn't That's change true. that we are weak. So sometimes we're like, if we're, if we're ever tired, we're like, oh, it's time to stop. No, the Lord just wants to be strong for you, but that doesn't mean he's only going to lead you to do things that are perfect, like that are not perfect, that are like super enjoyable all the time. That's not easy in scripture. That's not right. in scripture. Like right. we did, that is false theology. God is actually going to call us to do things that are difficult yep. because when we do the difficult things, we learn that we can't do it on our own strength. And then we learn to lean on him. I think that's why he calls us to difficult spaces. Cause he's like, you gonna, you gonna rely on yourself or me here. Mm. Yep. Not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, God. Mm. I cannot lean on my own understanding, but in all of my ways, acknowledge you Lord, knowing that you are going to make my path straight. And the way that you're going to make my path straight is if I listen to your voice, knowing where you are leading. And so I got to make you a priority in my life. Mm -hmm. I got to sacrifice all of these lesser loves and look up, look up to heaven. And you do that, Ashley. And I'm just so grateful. And I would love to land this conversation too, because I know both of us are in a season of singleness and just walking out just walking with Jesus. And I heard this said the other day, Ashley, it's not waiting for God to do something. It's waiting with God. He is mm -hmm. with us in the waiting. We're yeah. not like waiting on him, tapping our toe and like pointing to our watch that we don't wear. Cause no one really wears watches. I feel like, but you know, yeah. like, or, or your Apple watch, but you know, mm -hmm. you're waiting with him. And so we can worship in the waiting. We can work in the waiting. So what, what do you feel like Honestly, I feel like I'm answering my own question, but everything that you're doing right now in this season is preparing you for the next. But is there anything specific that you feel like in that certain area that is really like launching you forward? God is teaching me to trust him with, with everything, but specifically, oh my goodness, when you're a single girly and you've been waiting on the Lord with the Lord yeah. to provide um, and to, you know, meet this man that you've been praying for, for years and it, it doesn't happen. You're like, okay, Lord, this is teaching me real faith right now. Mm. And I always go back to Abraham and Sarah because they were given a promise and they were, they, their faith grew so much. And Abraham was counted righteous because of his faith, because he believed God. He believed every word that God said, even though he was old, even though the circumstances didn't look good. So the Lord is teaching me what real faith is mm. when I can't see it. And that is so hard. And I think very honestly, very few people get to that because yeah. we like the church on Sunday morning faith, but not the faith that we actually have to rely on God to bring about something that we've never seen before, that all circumstances would say that's hopeless. That's faith. If you can believe God for those things, whether it's a godly man, whether it's healing, maybe it's healing from sickness you're walking through, 
maybe it's good godly friendships you haven't had in, mm -hmm. in years. Like if you can believe God in that place, oh my goodness, that's faith. That is real faith unlocked. And I think very few people get to that point. No, I think you're right. And you know what? In Hebrews, it says we can't please God without faith. And we, we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Mm -hmm. It is all by faith. And we read that throughout the scriptures. And that's why we have stories shared through our, the hall of faith, even reading about all of the people that have gone before us that are cheering us on, you know, mm -hmm. in Hebrews, yeah. it's just such a beautiful thing. And so for you to remember what Abraham and Sarah went through, mm -hmm. they weren't perfect, right? <laughs> They're trying to do it in their own strength, even yeah. and just like you said, Ooh, it never works out didn't work out for them either but when they walked by faith when they held on to the promise mm. laughter was brought into the world with Isaac mm. you know and so wait on the promise he is the promise keeper he is the light in the darkness and Asha actually I led that song way maker the other night and and believing every word that you're singing you know, we, we sing these songs. Oh, I hear this on the radio. I know it like, da, 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 da. you know, you get into that. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Do you believe that? Because mm. if you believe it, you'll walk it out. And that that's what it means to walk by faith and mm. not by sight, to not lean on your own understanding. His ways are higher. His thoughts are higher. And mm. I, those are all scriptures. I only know that because I'm spending time with him. And when I made him a priority, <laughs> my life changed <laughs> and yours did too. And so this is just Ashley and Georgia, sister to sister here, sharing with you friends, like get in the secret place, get still with him. Maybe go on a drive and don't turn on the radio or a podcast. Maybe turn off those sermons that you've been, you know, sermons are a great thing, but like, just go straight to the word that's alive and active. And so Ashley... I just thank you, like as your sister, like thank you for lead, leading your life in such a way that is righteous and pure and holy because he never asked for perfect worship because Jesus was the perfect worship, atonement, sacrifice. All he asked for was pure worship. And as you walk in that every day of like, Lord, renew me from the inside out. Make me more like you today. Okay. I'm waking up at 5 a.m. Here I am, Lord. And you're like, Ooh. and you're just being faithful. Like the Lord searches the earth to and fro and he's looking for faith. And when he sees you, Ashley, I know he smiles. And it doesn't end with you. The fruit that you bear in your life, sis, it's meant to feed others. Mm -hmm. And it feeds thousands. Like, I don't know if y'all follow the honey scoop and are a part of that sweet tree community and all that beauty that the Lord is doing through sister friend over here. But it feeds me. Like you are a Psalm 1 tree planted by streams of living water. And in every season, your leaves do not wither because you are abiding. Mm -hmm. And so... I honestly just want to say thank you. Thank you for inspiring, encouraging us all. This was very practical, tangible, mm. and I just love you, Ashley. I love you. And Georgie, I want to leave our listeners with one last thing. Please. I, I'm a huge practicality girl. Like I bring it to practical. I don't want you leaving this going, that was a cool conversation. I feel super inspired. And then be like right back to ground zero. So Come on. do what Abraham and Sarah did and talk to God about mm. what you're struggling to believe in him for. So Abraham, actually, I don't really know if Sarah did this much, but Abraham would talk to God. So just talk to God about what you're struggling to believe him for. Talk to him, bring it to him. And that's going to grow your prayer life leaps and bounds. And it's going to grow your relationship with him leaps and bounds. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. You just got to come to him and say, hi, God, it's me. <laughs> come on. You for the book. George, yes. I love you so much. I love you, Ashley. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. 
Well, y'all, thank you so much for joining us in this conversation. I pray that it inspired you, encouraged you to just continue in this walk with Jesus and put him at the forefront, at the center of it all. When we do that, everything else falls into place. In the devotional, Hi God, It's Me, as you read that Devo Day of how prayer should be our priority, you get to hear a little glimpse into my heart about my favorite verse. My favorite verse is Matthew 6, which says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. If you read Matthew 6 above that verse, it talks about all of these things, clothing, shelter, food, just provisions, the things that come with life. But it's when we seek God's kingdom first that everything else falls into place. And so to seek him wholeheartedly is such a sweet and beautiful thing. And with seeking comes surrendering. Surrendering lesser loves and idols, laying down the things of this world and fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. And so another way to seek him is to honor him through how we are spending our time. God's word says that man makes his plans, but the Lord orders his steps. And so I am just really excited, even after this conversation, because you know what? Sometimes you just got to do inventory, not once a year or not even quarterly, not even weekly, but daily of like, okay, Lord, is this what you want for me to do today? Give us this day our daily bread. You remember that a few weeks ago with Michael? Our daily bread. He is enough for you today. Let him sustain you and meet you right where you're at. And you know what? He is so proud of you. This season is significant and it has purpose. So that's just a little pep talk from me to you. (laughs) But y'all, I love you so much. And I'm so grateful for this prayer series. And it's been such a joy. I'm so excited to continue in the weeks ahead. We've got so many sweet conversations to have with so many friends, a lot of new friends to the podcast. So I'm pumped. But before we go, I would be honored to pray for you. Lord God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your sovereign hand over our lives. You are so good. And I thank you for being our Savior and our Redeemer and our Father. But Lord, I just thank you for being our friend. That we can walk with you. That was what you wanted to do back in the garden. You walked with them in the cool of the morning. You just want to walk with us. And so, Lord, may we walk with you. May we come to you with such eager expectation saying, Lord, what is this day going to look like? What do you have planned that I don't even know about? And Lord, may we joyfully surrender things that are keeping us from you. May we just let go of them. May we be so pumped for you to prune our lives, even though sometimes it is painful. It's all for our good and for your utmost glory. So Lord, I just pray that we would honor you with our time, that you would get our yes. You would get our yes always, not sometimes, not when it's convenient, but that you would have our yes. When it says, here I am, Lord, send me in scripture, that means You have my yes before I even know what you're going to ask. That's such a beautiful thing. So here I am, Lord. (laughs) Lord, I thank you for Ashley. I love that girl so much. I don't think she'll ever know how much I love her. And I just pray that each and every friend listening feels the same way, feels such a joy and and excitement to continue running the race that you have specifically placed before each of us because it looks different, but it is so special. And so, Lord, we come out of agreement with anything that we have made a contract with that is not from you because every good and perfect gift comes from above. And so if it is not in alignment with on earth as it is in heaven, God, we just come out of agreement with it. Any doubt, any lies, any anxiety, any depression, any fears. God, we just want you. So show us what that looks like in the days to come. I pray blessings over Ashley's ministry, God, and I just pray that you would continue to expand her territory. And Lord, I just thank you for the devotional of Hi God, It's Me. I'm so pumped for it to come out in just about a little over, wow, a little over a month, Lord. Thank you. And I thank you for this prayer series and for these conversations and for all the good fruit that is going to come from these sweet, precious conversations together. Lord, we trust you and we love you. 
And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. (laughs) Y'all, thank you so much again for joining. I'm so grateful. I am so pumped to see you next week. But until then, do not forget, there is a song on your heart only you can sing. Your voice is important.